Hi guys, welcome to Simply Scuba. So in today's comparison video, we're comparing wings. So when I first started getting into backplate and wings and harness setups, this was kind of the complicated bit because you're never really taught what to look for. Uh, right now I've got two sort of twin cylinder wings and um, and they're, they're basically, they're gonna do the same thing, but they're ever so slightly different. So I'm just gonna look at the different features and kind of, I like this, I don't like that. Um, just to, again, help you guys make a decision. So with me today, I've got the Apex WTXD45 um, and then the X-Deep NX Project Wing. So these are both suitable for twin cylinders, sort of twin 12s. Um, it's gonna mount onto your back plate and then have sort of twin cylinders behind you. Now obviously you can't use them with single cylinders, otherwise they're really gonna tack her up. And, um, and then on from that, there's lots of little things like the outer shell uh, that we're gonna compare and then the sort of internal bladder, the kind of shapes and whatnot and uh, sort of overall lift and sort of how it fits uh, sort of behind you. So let's take a closer look at the sort of the aesthetics and the sort of physical hardware of each of these wings. Okay, so we're gonna start off looking at the WGX45. So I'm just gonna move the XD project out of the way a little bit. So this is very much a classic donut wing. Uh, so that basically means that it connects down at the bottom. The old fashioned sort of horseshoe uh, sort of style wings, they don't have this section, um, but this is much more popular because you don't have two separate lobes and uh, air can get trapped inside one side. It's kind of free to float all the way around. The only downside um, to a donut wing that I can really find is some people think that when you're um, sort of storing your, um, or sort of standing up your unit, sometimes your cylinders can kind of stand on that bit, but touch wood, it's never been a problem for me. So we have this huge dead zone in the center. This is where your back plate is going to mount. And uh, if I just get the hose out of the way, you can see all these different mounting points. So these are what you really wanna be looking at. Uh, we've got three different sort of uh, grommets at the top. And then this is really important for me. We've got a, uh, a long slide. So that way, even if you're not using an apex wing, you're more likely to be able to mount it. Because I mix and match my gear, sometimes my back plate, the holes in my back plate don't line up perfectly with the holes in this kind of dead zone. So this is really important because it doesn't have to be exactly um, sort of fitted to be able to mount it. So that uh, definitely wins my vote. Um, Big, big open space because your cylinders are, are going to be on the other side of this and you want that kind of inflation to go around them, otherwise you just limit your, um, your buoyancy. Um, we've got some grommets at the bottom so it drains. Uh, we've got a low pressure, sorry, low pressure, low volume um, or low profile is an even better way to describe it. Um, so dump valve. Um, it does have a little tag, I'd probably take that off. Um, and it does kind of loop through this. Again, I'd probably unthread that. Um, but otherwise, that's quite nice. That sits, when it's kind of on your back, that sits right next to your hip. Um, so it's really easy to find that uh, without looking. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it definitely works. It's nice and low profile as well, so it, it doesn't get in the way or bump up against anything. Um, the uh, low pressure inflator hose, the corrugated hose, that sits quite high up over your shoulder, uh, sort of right up there by your, um, your D-ring. Standard style K inflator, uh, really traditional, really easy to, uh, to get used to. Uh, big metal buttons as well, which I, uh, I really like. And the corrugated hose itself is kind of oval shaped, so it sits quite nicely uh, over your shoulder and it just kind of sits exactly where you want it to. Uh, a braided hose, that's a little bit long for my liking. Um, I've probably got about an extra 10 centimeters that I don't like on that. Um, a little bit too long, so I'd probably swap that out for a, a shorter hose. Um, but you do have quite a nice uh, sort of webbing hose keeper on that. Um, that I do like because that's I prefer it to those uh, just sort of rubber um, sort of inner tire rings. Uh, yeah, that's that's really smart. That's um, quite nice. 90 degree elbow uh, that attaches in the center. So that just means it's gonna sit in between your valves and uh, not get in the way. This is very standard, very uh, traditional. No pull dump, because that's just something else uh, to worry about. And then on the back side, it's quite nice and flat. 
So um, that's going to sit uh, sort of underneath your cylinders. So it's quite big when it's kind of on your back as a sort of twin wing should. You want kind of all the inflation around you and sort of lower down towards your hips. This is very traditional. On the inside, um, you can access the bladder. If I just show you that there. So we have this external shell, and this is very strong material. This is very robust. Um, I wouldn't worry about uh, sort of abrasions on this. And then on the inside, we have a sort of a plasticky um, uh, sort of internal bladder, but this itself feels quite tough. Um, they don't give it like a dernier rating uh, as they do on the sort of external shell, but this itself does feel quite tough. Um, but if something's going through that and then the bladder, it's got to be pretty sharp and uh, you've got to really sort of go for it. Um, so all in all, I like how tough it feels. Um, it's got sort of good aesthetics. It feels nice when it's kind of behind you. Everything fits exactly where it should do. Um, now let's take a look at the, uh, the NX because the, the WTX45 is a very traditional style twin wing. Um, it's it's very much the golden standard. That's how wings have always been made. When X Deep have come onto the scene, they've kind of take, they've looked at this and they've gone, right, how can we change this and make it more efficient and um, just put their kind of twist on it? They've done a few different things. The first thing that you notice is the dead zone in the center, if I just move the hose out of the way again, is much, much smaller. So that means that they can fit the, um, uh, the same amount of buoyancy a little bit closer, so it's much narrower. This feels quite small when it's on your back. It's almost like a single wing, um, but it has the lift of, uh, for, for twins. The, um, the dump valve is much higher up. I'm not entirely sure why they've done this because it's not where I naturally reach to, um, to find my dump valve. It's not hard to find, it's just a little bit higher up. Um, and it is a bit of a higher profile um, sort of dump valve. It's not huge, uh, it's pretty standard, uh, but when you compare it to the WTX, um, they have their low profile valves um, and they're really flush. Uh, this one's just a little bit bigger. Again, it has a little tab. I'd probably get rid of that and just tie a little knot, um, but it's not sort of woven in anywhere. Um, so that's kind of winning my vote. Dead zone in the center, we can see we have three holes at the top and three holes at the bottom instead of a, um, a long sort of slide. So that does limit the uh, sort of compatibility with different back plates. Um, so that's a slight downside for me. Uh, the grommets are fine. It's just if they don't line up with my back plates, it can be a little bit tricky to, uh, to mount it. One of the big differences is in how they mount this uh, sort of shoulder dump, the inflation valve, and instead of a 90 degree angle, it just mounts straight in. Again, it's in the center, so it's nice and neat. It um, sort of stands like out of the way of your valves, um, but you're reducing the number of failure points, so it comes sort of straight out and over your shoulder. Pretty uh, traditional corrugated hose that sits about the same place uh, as the WTX45, just over your D-ring, sort of right there on your shoulder, and you have pretty much the same style K-style inflator. Only real difference is that the buttons are plastic uh, compared to the metal ones on the, uh, the D45, so I'd prefer that just because it makes that a little bit stronger, um, makes it a little bit heavier, so it's more likely to sit exactly where you want, less likely just to um, sort of move around. Plastic rubber hose, yeah, I'm fine with that. It's, it's a pretty short hose on twin sets, uh, so you don't have to worry too much about uh, sort of weight or it's floating off, and you get a pair of these uh, sort of rubber uh, sort of hose keeps. Yeah, they're fine. They do the job. Again, I prefer the sort of, uh, the, the webbing one, but um, yeah, they, they do the job, and you're not you're not fiddling around with them too much. Uh, length of hose, again, a little bit, uh, a little bit long, but it's fine. Uh, it's a little shorter than the WTX, so I'd probably be fine using this hose. Um, and then what they've done is this area 
just behind your shoulders is much, much smaller. So this allows for a really smooth airflow. And then when you're actually in the water, it gives you a nice trim. Um, X-Deeper plays particular attention to your kind of trim and how the buoyancy characteristics when you're kind of upright on the surface or when you're horizontal, they've done a lot of adjustments and uh, it does keep you in a nice position in the water. Other side, uh, nothing too fancy in here. The material itself, uh, again, it feels nice and tough. You've got a big uh, sort of section down on the like small of your back. So that's gonna keep you uh, sort of in position. But yeah, this external shell, this feels really tough abrasion resistance. Uh, you can still access the bladder if I unzip that a bit. So now our internal bladder, this is a, uh, or this does have a, um, a denier rating. So instead of just that uh, sort of plasticky material, uh, this has that kind of nylon webbing on the outside, giving that a bit of um, protection as well as this external shell. And um, and yeah, it's, it's a nice shape. It just feels that much smaller. It feels a little bit too small, but uh, when you're actually in the water wearing it, it feels fine. Okay, so as far as the kind of the aesthetics, the kind of look and feels to it. Uh, I do like them both. I do like the way that they, that X Deep have kind of twisted it and they've made a few uh, sort of improvements and whatnot, but I'm still leaning towards the W2X45 because it's it's more like what I'm used to. It's got that sort of central slot, so it's got the, um, uh, the, the variety that it can connect to or be compatible with different back plates. And uh, just the overall sort of aesthetics, yeah, I'm leaning towards the, uh, the Apex. It's, it's more like what, I, what I'm used to, and uh, I'm definitely sure it's gonna fit my back plate, and it's got everything that I need. But let's take a look at the, uh, the, the nitty gritty and take a look at the specifications. Okay, so let's look at the technical specifications because they're pretty similar items, but there are little, little differences um, that are worth noting. And I'm just gonna explain basically what they mean. So first of all, the lift. So the lift is the amount of positive buoyancy when these are fully inflated. Um, so we got the NX at 23 kilos or about 50 pounds. Um, so that's plenty of lift for twin 12s. Um, but the, uh, the D45, as the 45 in the name suggests, has 45 pounds of lift, so a little bit less, uh, 20 kilos versus the 23 kilos. Um, that's still plenty. Um, yeah, I dive on a 20 kilo wing with my um, sort of twin 12s, and um, yeah, it's, it's plenty. Um, so sort of any more, and it's, it's getting into sort of more technical where you just need even more buoyancy. But for uh, sort of most sort of recreational diving on uh, sort of steel twin 12s, plenty of lift. Um, the external shell differs as well. On the NX, you've got 1,100 denier material. On the, uh, on the 45, you've just got 1,000. So they're both strong, they're both uh, sort of abrasion resistant, but it's a little bit tougher on the uh, on the NX. So that way, if you're uh, sort of going in and out of wrecks or sort of confined spaces, it's just a little bit tougher as well um, in sort of comparing them. Then with the internal shell, the actual bladders themselves, the, um, the, the 45, this has 22 mil urethane, um, which doesn't really mean too much to me. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to compare that to a, um, a a sort of nylon cordura, sort of dernier material, uh, because you've got 440 dernier for the uh, the internal bladder on this one. It feels strong. I'd wager to say that the 440 is a little bit tougher on the um, on the NX. Uh, but I can't really compare those two. It's, it's hard to say sort of which is actually uh, sort of tougher. Uh, so then we're going down to the overall weight of the system. So this is the dry weight, obviously, as they are. So the, um, 
the WTX45. So this is weighing in at about 2.1, 2.2 kilos, uh, adjusted as it is with the uh, the Project NX because it's that much smaller. It only weighs one kilo. So out of the water, your entire rig is going to weigh a little bit less, which is quite nice. You've um, you're saving yourself about a kilo of weight. Lord knows how they uh, how they did that because um, there's not a great deal of difference. Um, they've they've definitely saved some weight somewhere. Um, and then finally, we get down to the the recommended retail price. So right now, the uh, the NX uh, sort of retails around the 319 British pounds, uh, whereas the WTX is retailing around the 340. So it's about 20 pounds more expensive at the full sort of RRP. Uh, the actual web prices they all fluctuate, so I'm just going to tell you the RRP. Um, but you're getting a few different features. You've got sort of more material. Um, but uh, but yeah. Other than that, um, X Deep are very good at sort of throwing in information, the uh, the additional extras that uh, aren't immediately obvious. So we have a sort of antibacterial and antifungal coating on the inside of their bladder. Uh, I know Apex do that on some of their regulators. I don't know whether it's got it on the uh, on the actual bladder itself. It might do, but they don't mention it on their web page, so I don't really know. Um, other than that, um, they're both kind of level pegging. There's a few things which kind of lean to the X Deep being the um, the better. It's kind of lighter. It's got the tougher materials. Um, it's yeah, it, it weighs less, um, but still they've got much of the same features. They just do it in slightly different ways. So let's kind of bash it all together and really sort of figure out which one I prefer. Okay, so there are your specs. So, um, so yeah, they're both kind of the same thing. There's a few little itty bitty changes, um, but overall, I'm still leaning towards the classic, the the WTX D45. It's it ticks all of the boxes, and it's got that sort of customizability. So even if you're not diving a Apex backplate, you can still fit it. Um, that's a massive tick on uh, in sort of my books. Okay, it's a little bit larger profile, but um, that has never been a, a huge issue for me because it's not that much wider than my shoulders, so I don't have to worry too much about uh, sort of that overall width. And um, because it's not sort of fully inflated when I'm actually under the water, it just sits there and it, and it does its job. It's tough, it's got that classic inflator, uh, I prefer all the little sort of details on it. So yeah, I'm leaning towards the WTX45. I do love the uh, X Deep. I'd be happy with that. Don't get me wrong, but I find with their sort of bladders and whatnot, I prefer them in their sort of lightweight uh, kind of setups, like with their Zen and their Ghosts. With those kind of wings, because they're all set up and uh, it's all X Deep. And they are just, they're lovely um, setups, but as a an individual, just a wing, just a bladder to then fit to uh, a, a black a back plate and harness setup. Yeah, I I just love the Apex WTX range. They're as I said, they're strong, they're tough, um, they do everything. They've got decent buoyancy, nice trim in the water as well. Um, you've got the low profile valves. Admittedly, yeah, I change a few things there, um, but actually, yeah, it ticks all the boxes for me. Okay, yes, it does have a lot of dead space um, sort of over the back plate, but hey, it's, it's not the end of the world. But of course, what do you guys reckon? What do you use? Um, I mean, uh, I don't actually dive with either of these. I actually have a different wing, but if that one were to uh, to pack up, I'd probably be looking at these two as my sort of top tier replacements. And yeah, I'd probably go for the uh, the 45 if uh, if my twin wing ever uh, sort of packed it in, because yeah, it's it's a nice shape and it ticks all the boxes for me. But what do you guys reckon? What would you dive on if you're diving twins? What do you dive on? Is 45 pounds enough lift for you? Um, if you're diving with multiple stages, you can go up to a larger size. Um, this is very much fine for me because I just tend to have um, sort of twin 12 steels and maybe one uh, sort of stage cylinder. That's plenty of lift for me. Um, but uh, yeah, let's have a discussion in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And of course, 
If you enjoyed this, don't forget to click that like, share, and subscribe button so you can see more like it. Uh, we do about one of these every single week. And if you want me to compare anything in particular, let us know in the comments and I'll see if I can get my hands on one and give you my impressions on it. Yep, thanks for watching and safe diving. We are an online dive store serving the UK and the world for all your diving equipment needs. So why not visit us at simplyscuba.com or click the box on your screen.